any other topics which you think you want me to cover? Anything specifically uh, which you want to cover? Otherwise, you know, starting tomorrow, the next two, three days, we'll focus on questions, and then we'll get prepared for the interviews. Uh, I was thinking about, we were talking about doing a JAD session, talking more about that. Okay. Yeah. So, JAD session is one thing which I'll uh, take up. Right? Now, uh, let's let's do a more like a simulation of it, right, rather than uh, me just talking about it. Right? Now, it, it would be like more like a role play. If, if, you know, you know, you'll have to understand the context. So, uh, let's do this thing. Let's pick up a requirement and then see how we would have proceeded. Right. Uh, let's say there is an uh, existing system. Uh, let's pick up something which we all understand. Right. So let's say there is a YouTube uh, application, and you want to make some changes to this. Right. So you, let's say you are a, you are a business analyst in YouTube. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you want to maybe uh, make a change request coming in here, right? So that's a requirement, and uh, you know you are the business analyst there. So there is a um, SME who will tell us from a business point of view what is the change. You have architects, right? So who are uh, who have actually designed and then they know the underlying architecture. And then there is a testing team as well. So usually the participants would be uh, so usually the participants would be uh, you know there would be a SME right there would be a technical architect right so there will also be a QA guy and maybe an ops guy. So there will be all those various uh, stakeholders, and then there will also be a business analyst. Uh, you would be the person who is managing the requirements. Okay. So why do you do con uh, why do you do the JAT sessions? Why can't we just go and then meet the SMEs first, understand requirement, and come back? We can do that, and then you know. But when we take those uh, requirements to the architect, he might say that you know what, this is not feasible. Right? So then you'll have to go back to your SME again, right? So you know the decision is not made in one single go. All right. So you'll have to first contact him, uh, then understand the requirement, then you'll have to pass it on to this guy. This guy would come back and then say, "No, what? This is not possible." Then you'll go back to him and then give these options. Okay. And then uh, once uh, you know he would he would come back with some more suggestions, right? Uh, then you'll pass it on to this uh, architect again. You'll also pass it on to this ops and then the QAT, right? So these guys have some feedback as well, right? So maybe you know something is not possible, some additional steps have to be done, right? So which would have been, uh, uh, you know, not covered if you had uh, interacting with them individually, right? So the advantage of having a common session with all these various uh, stakeholders is that your decision making is faster. You can make make a decision much faster. You would say, okay, no, uh, you'll you'll figure out from the SME and then say, this is my requirement, right? Requirement one. Okay. Now, what are all the options in which this can be implemented? There could be some two three solutions which are available, right? So these solutions could come in from the TA, or you could suggest something, or the SME himself could suggest these options, right? So there could be like alternate one. This could be as alternate. Alternate one, alternate two, and alternate three, right? Then you'll take all these uh, uh, opinions, right, from the technical architect, which among them is the most uh, most reliable one. They would say, you know, the second alternate is much better because it will have it. Then the ops guy would say, you know, what maintaining a uh, second alternative would be difficult, right? I would suggest make an alternative three. Right? Architect three A also would comment on this. So. You are having a discussion on that and then figuring out, okay, now what? Let's go with alternate three uh, out of all these three options based on the inputs coming in from your architect, ops, QA team, and the SME. Right? So that's the advantage what you have. You're taking all those inputs and making a decision right in one single meeting. Right? 
otherwise you'll have to have those multiple interactions back and forth would happen and uh, you know all those different views would not come in right so the ops guy would think from a you know from a operational point of view whether it's feasible or not the sma would think from a user point of view what is the best way it can handle and the technical architect would bring in his perspective from uh, you know technical implementation of it so all those views are are uh, taken up right so that is how you would uh, right and uh, we are looking at some example let's say um, you know youtube want to make some changes to its application right so you are a business and is there and uh, you know you are you are uh, asked to um, you know revamp the screen right so your uh, home screen right so it's not uh, very appealing now or people uh, you know uh, don't want to uh, visit this or you want to increase it or make it more uh, better right now there are different perspectives right so the sme would look at from a uh, business point of view how can i bring in more business how can i add more uh, advertisements to this right and make it the uh, view more appealing uh, to uh, to the end user right uh, then uh, you could get it from an architect's point of view right so can we start playing the video uh, right up front before rather than wait over what the user to click something can i play default video right so the views from the architect would come oh no no that is not possible the user has to click on something then only you can uh, present it right so all those uh, you know solutions what comes out as part of this discussion right would have been uh, addressed here so usually the jat sessions make a lot more sense when there you have an existing a uh, framework and then you want to make changes to that right so you can consider all those various perspective on on what is the impact of that change and uh, you know what all needs to be uh, you know taken care of if you make that change from a process point of view from a technology point of view from a requirement point of view you can get all those various uh, uh, perspectives and and capture the requirement in one go right so you don't have to make those multiple uh, you know uh, multiple uh, uh, it, uh, you know meetings to to cover that requirement right so to simply put it it's nothing but a meeting right and in that meeting you are not uh, just focusing on with the smes but you're also bringing in the technical expertise you are bringing in the operational people and the testing people to ensure that their per perspectives are also taken into consideration in defining your final solution right so that's what a a uh, a jat session is about make sense any uh, any specific questions you have on that you guys clear about it or you want me to take another a specific example and then uh, should we look at it or or you are clear about this jat session okay Right, so it, it's nothing but it's a meeting, right? So if somebody says, "Do you know that session?" Yes, it's a it's a meeting. So rather than just have it with the SMEs, you're also including the tech team, the ops team, and then the QA team, so that you get their uh, views also, right? So we'll take their views also and finally define your uh, solution, right? So rather than just uh, take it from the SME, you know, the SME will tell the requirement. Then you'll figure out what are all the alternatives available to meet that requirement um, by by taking inputs from the Technical architect from the uh, you know uh, the operations team, the QA team, and then decide on to the solution. Okay, so joint decision making is what we do. Okay, uh, I think some of the topics also we thought we would cover. I'm not able to recollect. Can some of you please uh, list them down? I somehow uh, missed it. I think. we had one more topic which was not clear to most of you we said said i would uh, cover it uh, later but yeah any other topics that you want me to discuss again anything which was not clear or you you think that you know we, we can discuss it again feel free to ask right? so uh, make sure that you get the best out of this next two three uh, one two sessions that will have on uh, doubt clearing and then interview questions i think we decided to do prototyping as one of the things that we were supposed to talk again prototyping right okay uh, 
yeah let me cover that as well i think you know this this actually is cartoon ship makes a very perfect uh, examples of why we need prototyping the customer wanted this right you so just want a simple thread and a tire around it and that is what his requirement is right and maybe you know this sma explained it to you in this way right so that that you know the way he explained it to you is this way okay now how you understood it it could be this way right or or uh, and and uh, you know the way the programmer uh, you know the the system let's say yeah so this is what you understood this is what the 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 person who designed it look uh, you know created it this way the programmer you know they did it in a completely different way and finally what did you deliver you delivered something like this right so this is what was installed right now if you look at it each one of them had a different view of the same thing right it's the same simple requirement i want a thread and then a tire around it and this is exactly what i needed right but then the they say may explain you that you need a nice place to sit through and then you can uh, swing the lamp so he explained it like this you understood okay you know there needs to be a place to sit and it could be hanging around with uh, ropes right and since uh, it cannot move he actually designed it in the way that the tree has to be cut right and then uh, the programmer completely wrote something else right so all throughout there is a disconnect why because you know nobody understood the requirement correctly right so there was no common view of the requirement okay so that is where most of the systems fail right so people will not use it if they don't find it useful so how can we avoid this we can avoid this by having a wireframe created okay wireframe basically is nothing but a screen which is telling you that you now this is how your prototype looks like this is how your final system would look like right if i have shown you this and and delivered you a youtube application you should be very uh, you know comfortable with it you will be okay with it i mean okay no i was broadly expecting the screen to look like this i'm i'm fine with the application now why because you know it, it, this is giving me an indication of how my final system would look like so the subject matter experts understands it the same way right so the business analyst understands it the same way the technical architects understands it the same way and the developer also understands it the same way right so each one of them when they are trying to understand the requirement they have a point of reference so they 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 would look at this okay this is exactly what i need to build right everybody would have that uh, view right so this is the reason why we would do prototyping okay now broadly how can you do prototyping what are the approaches that you take the first one is you will just draw a simple sketch right so you will pick up a piece of pen uh, piece of paper and pen and then draw it right so this is nothing but a drawing which have let's say we have which have scanned okay now looking at this i can broadly get a view okay you know this is how my final system would look like right so more or less i get that view right but uh, let's say i am actually uh, showing him the uh, you know the screenshot right so uh, let's like take the same screen right so if if i say that this is how your screen would look like right i would actually create this and then uh, you know let me take a screenshot and then i'd say if i if i give him this view so you would exactly know how the screen would look like right so how can i do this i can just you know uh, create a html page and then uh, implement this right this, this is more like a sketch what i am drawing so here i am using a dev web developer and then actually creating this screen right so the second one is called as a evolutionary prototype because you know i'm i've just created the view right if i click on any of these links maybe they will not work right or or maybe all these uh, uh, features here are not Uh, activated yet right or or uh, uh, you know the 
the comments and then the likes and all that is not yet activated, right? So that could be the scenario. What you're doing is you're uh, you're clearly um, uh, you know uh, creating just a dummy screen there without all the functionality inside it, right? But this can be improvised, right? So you have that screen ready. You can just uh, you know activate these features of the liking and then sharing and and all those features might not be uh, you know available in that in the demo mode in the in the prototype mode, but when you are actually doing the development, you would do that. But broadly, as a user, I can look at them and then say, oh, you know what, these features would be there, so I'll be good with it, right? So that expectations are set right up front. Okay, so this is called as a uh, evolutionary prototype and the one what we have uh, showed this will just be used as a reference point right so again when the, uh, the, the guy is designing it it would he would just throw it away and then uh, you know start afresh so that would be uh, called as a throw away prototype right so that's a different type of prototypes that we have okay uh, i'll explain about the uh, the other type of prototype the horizontal and vertical prototyping in the next session, and anyway, we'll also look at the questions. I actually have a hot stop at this time, so I have to log, uh, right? So uh, next, you. going forward in next session, we'll we'll spend a lot on the interview questions, right? So guys, do log in for the next two three sessions, even though you think that you know it might you might uh, not learn anything, but you know, learning is one thing, and then ensuring that you articulate it correctly is also uh, another thing. So let's let's focus Can on that. Can talk about agile also in some like? Sure, sure. Questions? All uh, yeah. questions, whatever you have, you know, we'll we'll spend in the next two three days, right? So I want uh, okay. to ensure that you are clear with all your uh, uh, topics which are not clear. So list them down, right? So I'm I'm okay spending another two three sessions also, or more than that if it requires. But we'll ensure that everything is is clearly understood and uh, start preparing for your interviews and pick up all the topics which are not clear about. We'll uh, learn about that later in the next two three sessions.